Hi right, everyone, uh, Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars again, and I have another camera to show you. This is our uh, G26 mono camera. So we have the G26 color uh, that uses the Sony IMX571 uh, chip, um, but Sony announced a monochromatic version of that chip. So we were really excited to get it inside a um, inside a camera body and uh, play around with it and see what it can do. Uh, we liked it so much. Obviously, here it is. So. This is a 16-bit camera, and this, this has quickly become my favorite camera of our lineup. 16-bit um, is like the old CCD cameras where you've got that huge dynamic range and huge full wall capacity, uh, 0 to 65,000 um, counts from pure black to pure white. Uh, to compare, this is our G10 camera. Uh, this happens to be the G10 Mono, which we're also coming out at the same time. It's a 14-bit camera, so that's like 0 to 16,000, I believe and zero to 65,000. So extra bit depth really helps preserve that real subtle gradation from pure, from darker regions to brighter regions, and then also from the faintest outlying regions of a galaxy to the core of the galaxy. You can kind of keep it all exposed uh, together. Maybe the colors of the stars are easier to, to control as well. Um, and it's APS-C size format. So let's see if I can compare. Uh, oh, that's a little hard, but here we go. So, four thirds format G10, uh, APS-C size uh, G26. So, a lot more uh, real estate, if you will, in the image. So, your field of view is bigger side to side. So, it's easier to frame things or just you know image larger uh, objects in the sky. Um, so, um, yeah, APS-C size is is quite nice. Um, it's over 85 percent. Quantum efficiency, our previous cameras, uh, they could be as low as 60%, something like the G16 mono. Um, but this new generation, the G10 and this G26, over 85%, so quite a bit more sensitivity. Um, 3.76 micron pixels, uh, so kind of in between, not too big, not too small. Uh, it's got good resolution for planetary, lunar detail, uh, as well as uh, deep sky. And then it's... Uh, 6,000, here, let me get the right spec, it's 6224 by 4168. That's the pixel array uh, in this thing. Um, it's compatible with, um, it's ASCOM compatible, so that means it'll work with pretty much any third-party software. I run it with Sequence Generator Pro, um, Nina, um, SharpCap, um, Nebulosity, uh, Maxim DL, all, all those things that can control ASCOM cameras can run with this. Uh, it also comes with uh, free software included. That's the Starship IC um, to kind of get you up and running. But I really do recommend some of those third-party programs that are really dedicated to the best type of deep sky imaging and, and remote control and all sorts of fun stuff. So um, uh, compatible with all that. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to mention about this before I go on to some exposures or some examples? Um, it's a, the diagonal is 28.3 um, millimeters, that's that APS-C size format. Um, and then just uh, why you would pick this over the G26 color, or I suppose the smaller G10. And that's, an, that's an obvious choice, it's just a bigger field of view, you get more, uh, more objects in your field of view, so there's more real estate like I said. Uh, but why this over the color version? So color is the most um, convenient way to do it, right? A one-shot color camera, you just take an exposure, and your frame has all the colors in it, red, green, blue. You know, easy, right? But this is way more versatile. Because the, so there's a Bayer matrix in front of a color camera, uh, including the G26, including your, um, your uh, Nikon or Canon DSLR as well. Um, and that diverts each pixel, each, uh, it diverts each uh, photon of light towards one of the pixels below it. So uh, a, a red photon gets diverted this way to the red, pixel, and then the green here and here, and the blue over there. So it's diverting these pixels, and they're not all seeing, all those pixels are not seeing all of the light. So it's, it's by definition, kind of losing some sensitivity or some uh, some color detail. With the Bayer matrix out of the way, every pixel across the pixel array sees all of the light. So you put a red filter in front of this, and every single pixel sees the red. Way more sensitive than a one-shot color where only one out of the four pixels sees incoming red light. Um, then the downside is you've got to shoot through a red filter, then a green filter, then a blue filter, and then combine the results to get your final um, full color image. It is totally worth it though. It, the, the increase in sensitivity is so dramatic, um, it really shows you a lot more detail in your uh, uh, exposures. Uh, 
Plus, that also means you can not only do broadband imaging with a red-green-blue filter, but you can put in uh, special filters, hydrogen alpha, uh, oxygen-3, sulfur-2. Those are the narrow-band imaging filters uh, to do things like that Hubble palette where it, uh, you can image um, like a mission nebula under super high contrast uh, results, even with a moon out. Uh, a, a really narrow-band H-alpha filter really isn't affected much by moonlight or by city lights as well. So if you're stuck in the middle of some big, big city and you can't get away, throw an H-alpha filter in front of this and do narrowband imaging, and you'll be amazed at the results you can get. Um, so I believe that is what I wanted to say um, about the chip. Um, it's got all the same features of our G26 color, so take a look at that video as well. There's no um, amp glow with this. The, the G10 and some of our other cameras uh, have uh, amp glow in the corners, which you can totally get rid of by taking calibration frames, dark frames, um, but there's no, there's no amp glow with these, uh, so you're that much closer to your full image without needing to do quite as many um, calibration frames, Th though I do still recommend taking darks and flats and all that stuff. Uh, but it's a much cleaner chip uh, right out of the box. When you take a picture, it's, it's smooth from, from corner to corner. Um, uh, there are, uh, the one other thing I wanted to say, and all the pictures I have uh, taken that I'm going to show you are at zero gain in HCG mode. There's two modes. There's LCG, high gain, high, high control gain, low control. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this on the fly and I forget what the, the, the letter stands for, but HCG and LCG. Uh, LCG gives you the biggest dynamic range. Um, th the HCG mode, it compresses it a little bit, but the read noise goes way down. So the cleanest images are actually in, in HCG mode uh, at the expense of a little bit lower dynamic range, um, but it really doesn't affect it that much, so, so that it's, it's worth it. Um, I take all of the images that, I, that I'm going to show you at zero gain with this because uh, it's already beyond parity, um, so you don't have to worry about figuring out where parity is. Um, zero gain, it's, it's something like 0 0.25 uh, 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 electrons per ADU, so it's, it's below one. Um, all right, so let me switch over and show you some of these. So this is Pix Insights. I, I, I uh, processed all these shots in Pix Insights. This one, this one's, this one's all right. Uh, not my best work, but it's it's Markarian's chain. I just want to show you there's a ton of galaxies across the field of view. Um, uh, there's probably 20, 20 some galaxies. Here's the eyes right here. I think that's called the eyes. Uh, the individual NC, NGC I'm, I'm forgetting at the moment. Um, but Markarian's chain, just tons of galaxies across the field. All of these shots, all of the color uh, broadband shots were taken at 180 seconds each. So I think, I believe with this one, I stacked like 20 frames each red, then 20 frames green, 20 frames blue, um, to make up the, the final image. Oh, and then, and then L, I did 20 frames, uh, of luminance with, through a clear filter just to get the detail and then the RGB for the, for the color data. Uh, but no more than 180 seconds uh, for all the broadband shots here. Um, this is a fun duo of galaxies here. This is the whale up top. That's the whale. And then down here, I think this is called the hockey stick. Um, same thing, 180 second exposures. Um, I forget exactly how many I stacked, but it wasn't all that many. Um, and moving on, this is NGC, uh, I'm sorry, uh, M106. We're seeing these side by side. It looks like I've got to do some color correction here um, with the backgrounds. But uh, this is a nice one because it's got some H2 regions in the core here. And then I was like this. Uh, let me slide over to it so you can see it. It's just on the edge of your screen. This cool little edge-on galaxy right in the middle of the frame, or right on the edge of the frame. Um, plus, again, lots of little galaxy in the background. The sensitivity of this camera is just crazy for just 180-second exposures. Um, then I wanted to do something different. I wanted to show you what you can do with hydrogen alpha. And I was blown away by this one. This is a five nanometer H alpha filter that I put in front of the camera. And I took a picture of the jellyfish. Uh, now this is 300 second exposures because uh, hydrogen alpha definitely dims down the image. So I wanted to go a little bit more. Um, so 300 second exposures. And again, I forget exactly how many I stacked, but it was probably about 40 here just to really go deep um, and get some of this faint outlying stuff. Um, but again, it's just a really fun way to do imaging in either light polluted skies or in the city. 
throw an H alpha filter on there and go go really high contrast. Uh, what's the next one? Oh yeah, so this one this is the one I worked the most at. This is uh, the Whirlpool, and this is a really long stack of luminance data. So I did uh, like 20 frames of R RGB, red, green, blue. Uh, 180 seconds, and then I also added in a ton of luminance. I just shot for like one one full night just doing the black and white luminance uh, with a clear filter. I think it ended up to be about four hours of exposure of luminance, um, and stacked them all together. And yeah, you, the 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 H2 regions really pop out there. So I, I think this is my new favorite camera, and one I'm probably going to get for myself uh, for my <laughs> for my rig. Um, APS-C size is nice and big, so your your field of view is not as limited like some of these other cameras. Um, works on any type of telescope. Uh, most of these were shot with a 5-inch refractor. I, in fact, I can't think if I did anything with a different... No, they were all, all with a 5-inch refractor. But high resolution with a bigger RC or much wider field of view with a little tiny 80 millimeter refractor to get wide field stuff would be awesome with this camera. Um, all right, there you go. This is the... G26 Mono, the APS-C size format camera. Thank you very much, and as always, clear skies.